Tanya for the third day of Teves, Gimel Teves, is in Perek Vav, chapter 6 of Tanya. It's on page 20. The number at the bottom of the page is 24. The Rebbe had said that opposite holiness, opposite the holiness of the godly soul, there is the unholiness of the animal soul. And just as the godly soul has ten powers, three of them intellect and seven emotions, the same is true also in the animal soul. There are ten powers. There are the emotions that are evil emotions, unholy emotions of the animal soul, and there are seven of them. And then there is the intelligence that guides the emotions. And there are three of those, so there are ten powers to the animal soul. And just as in the godly soul there are three garments, through which the ten powers of the soul express themselves, primarily intellect through the garment of thought and the other emotion, the emotions through the other garments of speech and deed. The same is true also in the animal soul that there are three garments, thought, speech, and deed. And when a person does any of these unholy things, expresses any of these unholy things, or says or thinks any unholy things, he becomes a vehicle for unholiness. Now, what is included in unholiness? So the Alter Rebbe says, everything under the sun, everything in this world is unholy. The very existence of the world, the condition of the world is unholy because it is not holiness. In other words, unholiness doesn't have a definition. Just as darkness can't be defined other than by saying that it is the absence of light. And then you have to define what light is. The same is true with unholiness. Unholiness means anything that is not on the side of holiness is, the, is, is unholy. And that's why in the Zayhar it is referred to as Sitra Akhra, the other side. The side that isn't holy. Or the absence of holiness. So now we have to define what is holiness. So the al Rebbe defines holiness as being that which is surrendered, that which is transparent to godliness. That which allows godliness, allows God's presence to show, that is holiness. That which blocks out the presence of God, in other words, which conceals the fact that God is present, that is unholy. What is holiness? Angels are holiness in, in, in fact, because they are actually and constantly bottled, surrendered, and transparent to godliness. And then there is every Jew in this world who has at least the potential to at any moment and at every moment give his life up for God, which means that he has a potential bittle, a potential transparency that, that at any time allows him to put himself aside and let godliness be revealed. Now, about in the middle of the page, a little bit past the middle of the page, the line begins with the words, Shinta Sharia La'ilam. Aval kol matshe'ene bottle let's lay his But anything that is not bottled to him, to God, is not transparent. Elohu dov or nifred bifne Rather, he exists like a separate entity, drawing attention to himself. Although, of course, he's existing from godliness, everything exists from godliness. But in its own experience, in its conscious state, it does not recognize or admit to its connection to God, so that it behaves as a davar nifrad bifnei atzmi. So this is a name mekabel chayis migdushas yishalakadish baruch hu. Those things that are unholy, that are not bottled, do not receive their energy from God's holiness. It doesn't receive its life from the inner holiness, from the essence and substance of God. Rather, the energy and the life force comes to the unholiness from the hind side, from the back. This energy descends level after level. And it comes down through the tens of thousands of levels in the chain of worlds, 
through cause and effect and many contractions, until it has been so diminished, this light or life force from God has become so diminished, until it is capable to contract itself. It is able to contract itself and clothe itself in the form of golos within this unholy thing, within that thing which is separated from godliness, which draws attention to itself, which means that the godly light or energy, life force, is contracted and diminished in tens of thousands of levels in its descent coming down to this world and then once it reaches this world it goes through an additional contraction in order to clothe itself within the unholy thing and once it's clothed in this unholiness it is still in a state of golos it is an exile within it it doesn't really belong there and it doesn't really feel comfortable there so unholiness means those things that block out the presence of God, that conceal the presence of God, that are not transparent to God's presence, and therefore they receive their energy not from the inwardness, in other words, not as an end in themselves, as an objective, that God wants them to exist for their own sake, rather they exist only for a secondary purpose, only because they are necessary in the fulfillment of God's plan and the pursuit of a perfect world. So in order to increase the goodness, to enhance goodness, to make goodness more real, there is a need for unholiness, for evil, and, and, and therefore, when something is needed or wanted only for some other purpose and not for itself, this is called hated or despised compared to that which is wanted and desired. And that energy, that life force that gives life to the unholiness, this is called the hind part. It is a, a backward kind of will, a secondary kind of will that is not the face, the inner will, but rather the back. Now, why is it given life? in order to give it life and existence, to bring it out of nothingness, and it is maintained this way that it should not return to its nothingness as it was in the beginning, prior to being created. So that the life force has to be given constantly in order to keep it in existence, but it is not given out of a true desire as an end in itself whereas that which is holy God gives those things energy and life not only to maintain them and to prevent them from disappearing but because they are the desire that God had in the first place to have a dwelling place in the lower world and those things that permit the dwelling place that create the dwelling place that make the world inhabitable for God those things are an end in themselves and exist because God desires them. And this explains why this world itself, not the evil behavior or the evil acts or the sinful deeds of the world, but the world itself is called the world of klipa and unholiness. Because unholiness doesn't mean sinful behavior or, or evil, wicked behavior. Unholy means anything that is not in the side of holiness. Anything that does not proclaim God's presence. And that's why all the mundane affairs of this world are, are, are bad, hard, difficult and, and evil and the wicked are, are successful dominate in this world the result of the natural condition of the world which is unholy leads to a further evil that the, that, that which is actually sinful flourishes or is dominant in this world because the world is predisposed to that kind of evil, being unholy by its very nature. 
asks, there are two conditions, two stages of unholiness. There's the unholiness, which is the lack of godliness, non-holy. And then there's that which is actual evil, the, the sins, the, the violations of the 365 negative commandments. Let's learn the, uh, the note. Im Hiyais, the Al Tadebbe says that though we're saying that this world is evil and it is called unholy, a world of Klippa and so on, Im Hiyais, Betechi Eses Vidis Dasiya Digdusha, this does not deny the fact that within this world there is in existence and present the ten attributes of Asiya of Kedusha. This world is the world of, Kedu- of Asiya. And in, in the world of Asiya, there is both good and evil. So present in this world is also the ten attributes of Asiya of holiness, the holy side of Asiya. And within these ten attributes of Asiya, which are holy, there is the presence of the ten Svides of Yitzira, which are holy and within them is the Bria. There is the presence of the ten attributes of Bria. And within them, in the ten attributes of Bria, there exists or there's a presence of the ten attributes of Atsilus. and in the ten attributes of Atsilus, there exists Ayrain Save Baruchu. There is God Himself. So that the, re- the result is, the conclusion is, that God himself fills this lowly world by his being clothed in the ten attributes of the four worlds. So that in addition to the fact that God is present everywhere, in spite of the klipa, and in spite of the concealment, in other words, there's a transcendent godliness that exists everywhere equally, which is called Save of Kalalmi. In addition to this, there is also the presence of God within the world, not only that which transcends, but there is godliness within the world in that God is present within the ten attributes with, of each world as they are present within each other. So that not only is there a transcendent presence of God even in an unholy world, but in the in the world itself, within the world, not transcending the world, there is also the presence of godliness, and it too is revealed. Only we are not receiving it. Back to the text. Elom, having said that this is a world of klipa and sitra achra. The Alter Rebbe now distinguishes between two levels of klipa. Elo shah klipa is heim nechloke is lishtei madregei zu lemato mizu. Klipa itself is divided into two levels, one lower than the other. You can't say one higher than the other because klipa is not high. So one is lower than the other. Hamadreg hatachtei no. The lower level he sholish klipa is at meiz veroiz legamet. This is the three unholy klipes that are that are totally bad, the Ainbahem Tev Klal, and they have within them no goodness at all. Although there has to be a spark of godliness in order for them to exist in the first place, but it is so concealed that for all practical purposes we call it completely bad. The Nikrubamekavashikheskil and they are referred to in the Merkova. In the vision of Yechezkel, in other words, they are present, their existence begins in holiness, they are present in the vision of Yechezkel, and they descend and become evil. So, in the, in the Merkava, in the vision of Yechezkel, they are referred to as Ruach, Sa'ara, V'on, and Godel, etc. Ruach, Sa'ara, a storm wind, and a great cloud, etc. And the etc. refers to Eish Mislakachas. A uh, flaming fire, a destructive fire. So there is ruach, onon, and fire. Ruach is air, onon, clouds, is a reference to water, and ash, of course, fire. So the the three totally evil klipa are not different levels of klipa. They're all equally unholy, 
they're all equally evil. Their distinction, the reason that there are three, is only to, to describe the forms that they take, that the unholiness comes in the form of air and water and fire, whereas earth is not counted. And as we'll see later, in the next Pavik, in talking about things that are totally evil, the al Rebbe does not mention those things that are of the earth, the inorganic. Because the inorganic never becomes completely prohibited, is never e- essentially prohibited. And the explanation in the Kabbalah is that all this unholiness comes from Shvira Sakelem, from the fall of the world of Tehu, Uvayu, and Cheshech. And uh, those things that come from a higher source, the higher it is, the lower it falls the more unholy it is. So these three unholy klipa, they come from the keser and chachma and bina, the three highest parts of tayhu. And the, because they are the higher parts, therefore they fall lower and they become the three unholy klipa. Whereas the, attrib- the element of earth comes from malchus. Earth is malchus. And malchus did not fall into un, totally unholy klipa. The other attributes of Tehu, which are the emotions, Chesed, Gvura, Teferes, and so on, they fell into klipas Nega, as will soon describe. Umehen, and from these totally dark klipa, Nishpois, Venimshoches, Nafshes, Kol, Umes. Ha'elam, Evde Gilulim, means idolaters. And that was it was that was put into the text probably by this because of the censors in the in Europe in order to publish a Tanya it had to make reference only to idolaters but it refers to all nations of the world. So from this untotally dark klipa comes the energy for the souls of all the nations of the world, the kiyum gufam and the existence of their bodies. And also the souls, the, the nefesh of all the animals that are un, unclean and prohibited in, their, in eating, they're not allowed to eat them, which again is a reference to both body and soul. The nefesh is tome, and the body is osr ba'achila. The kiyum gufam, the kiyum and also the existence of their body also comes from totally dark klipa and then kiyum v'chai is called macholis asuris the existence and the, and the energy the life of all the prohibited foods me'atse me'ach that comes from the, from the plant world from the vegetation k'mei what plants are unkosher k'mei orlo klayaker as for example the, the fruit of the tree for the first three years is prohibited and the mixture of grapes and wheat for example in the same field growing them in the same field is prohibited so that there are plants that you're not allowed to eat so their growth their life their energy comes from the totally dark people Another thing that comes from the totally dark klipa is the energy and the existence of all the act, speech, and thought of the 365 negative commandments, and their offshoots and branches and so on. So the first level of klipa, of the two levels, are the three totally dark klipa, which are complete, completely without any good, and from this klipa comes all those things that are prohibited and, and unholy, such as the non-Jewish body and soul, the animals that a Jew are not, is not allowed to eat, their body and soul, and the plants that a Jew is not allowed to eat. Here he doesn't say body and soul, because soul implies will. So the human being and the animal has will. But a plant, even though it is alive, it has life, but it doesn't have will. And therefore, its life can't be called nefesh. And then also the energy that a person uses to think or say 
or do any of the things that are prohibited, any of the acts that are prohibited, that energy itself, besides the fact that the sandwich of the non-kosher meat is from the totally dark clipper, its existence, the energy that one uses to eat that sandwich is also from the totally dark clipper. In the Hayyim Yayim, for the third day of Teves, for Gimel Teves, the Rebbe makes a notation and, and correct the text in, in Teva Eir, which is, uh, which is relevant only in Hebrew.